Good morning. Welcome to the Barnes Thunder Morning Services. Thank you so much for being a part of it. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. You can get involved with today's issue by calling 800-411-2663, 800-411-BOND, or email church at bondinfo.org, church at bondinfo.org, and put your name in town, name in town, your email, concerning today's issues, all right? And good morning to everybody here. Good morning. I'm glad you guys showed up. This is really cool. I, uh, I got an email from a man last Sunday. It was so off the wall, I thought the guy was joking. I'm like, no, that's a joke. Remember that email? Something about the environment? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm like, no, he's just playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, okay. I, um, uh, any questions before I get rolling about last Sunday's meeting? Or anything that you realize from the here. I mean, this week. Yes, ma'am. I realized something about myself while you was talking. A little louder, huh? I realized something about myself when you was talking. Um, I don't know if it was me or, but when you were saying that um, white people was this, like, to me it was like you was praising them and. Praising white people? Okay. I seen you as like a, I don't know, like a, you know how they used to put on black faces and, and dance and watermelons. And yeah. I don't know why that that image came in my mind when you was talking. Right. I just remember uh, Malcolm X when he said the house Negro and the um, field Negro. Right. I seen you as the house Negro. Really? Yeah. A house Negro. <laughs> I see you like I that. I wish I had worked in the house. They put me in the field. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I was a field nigger, but they put me in the house. I mean, yeah, but now I'm in the house. I've always wanted to get in the house, too, so it's pretty cool. And it's, I didn't want to feel like that. It hurt me. I almost wanted to cry, but I, I seen that. I yeah. don't know why. It just, I just, I, that image came in my mind when right. Malcolm X was describing it. It's like you was like the one he described as, what's the matter, master? We sick? And you was just so with the, the master. I just, I don't know. And I, I was just looking at you like, and when you asked me, I couldn't really reply because I was still looking at you like that. I was just like, I was just caught in, caught in. When the, when the master said we sick, I said, yes, the master, we all sick. Yeah, <laughs> we sick. Kurt, do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so how what would you learn? And so that would you learn about yourself? Would you learn maybe from that? I, it's, I'm still confused, but maybe it's something wrong the way I'm seeing things. Yeah. It's your resentment for white people. You only like them only up to a certain point. Hmm. You like them as long as they don't say anything bad about blacks, as long as they, you know, no, if they no. go along. It's kind but, of confusing because I've been around white people and they have said certain things and some of it I agree with and some of it I might say, wait, wait, you're going too far. Uh-huh. Maybe I don't. Yeah. No. That's what it is, though. It's your resentment for white people. And the reason I know that because I, I used to be the same way. When I was a liberal, I used to, and I, and I saw, there was this woman by the name of Mahela Jackson. Jackson. Remember her? Yes. Yeah. She used to love white people. She can sing. And I used to think, she is such a little sellout. <laughs> Why she like white people, you know? And if they became a Republican, I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> there was something wrong with that. But when I got over my hatred and God cleared my heart up, I see people as people now. But I I see people as people too, it's, and I agree with you on a lot of issues. A lot of it, it's just, it seemed like you was really praising, like you was gonna get on your knees and pray to him or something like that. Like wow. Yeah, it's like you, you got some serious anger a lot. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the things you were saying. Everything that was good was white, and everything that was bad was black. It seemed like to me, I was just like uh, sitting here. Like, you didn't see it as right versus wrong. No, it was, some things was right, but the way you were saying it was just, oh, the, they were white, and that's white, and they <laughs> white. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, 
Oh my God. I totally understand, sister. Uh, I had a guy call me up. I, uh, I thought I was on a Sean TV show. A black guy called me up from Texas. And he left this awful message on my uh, answer service. And at the end of the message, he said, uh, call me if you want. He left his number and said, call me. Remember that message? Yeah. And so I, I called the guy up. And on the message, he was like, I can't believe you're agreeing with that white man. You know, <laughs> how are you going to talk about Obama like that, right? And then he left his message. And he said, call me. So I called him up, and uh, he answered the phone. And I said, this is Jesse. And you left me a message, and you showed me to call you, so I'm calling you. And he said, oh, I was just thinking about you this morning, and I realized that that was a bad message to leave. I was wrong about the way I said that to you. I said, oh, cool. And uh, he said, but I saw you on the show, and I can't believe you up there agreeing with that white man. I, uh, Sean Hannity is just a racist, and you're agreeing with him. And black people got to stick together. And I said, well, did I say anything that was uh, not true? And he said, no, you didn't say anything that wasn't true, but you shouldn't be saying that with the white people. And I said, well, are you a Christian? And he's like, yeah, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. And um, I said, you know, the problem, sir, is that you're a racist. I said, you hate white people. And I said that there is no way that you could be a man of God and tell me that I told the truth, but I'm taking the side of white people. The truth is the truth, but there's no color to it. He said, but yeah, but you're not supposed to take the side of white people. I said, how do you think God would feel about that? And I said, your problem is that you hate white people. And I guarantee you, you, because he said, oh, I go to a white church. His preacher's white, a mixed church. And I said, I guarantee you, if the preacher said anything that you disagree with about blacks or about Obama, you wouldn't like him either. And he paused and he said, uh, that is true. He said, because my white preacher said something about Obama the other day, and now I can't hardly stand him. <laughs> he said, I can hardly go to that church now. I, he said that you, I've never thought of it that way. You're absolutely right. I never thought of it. I do hate white people. He said, because I can't hardly stand my preacher. And I've been going to this church for a long time. And I said, well, that's the problem. I said, you have this hatred of white people, and you don't know that you hate it hate them because you won't take time to look at yourself. I said, so sir, you are racist. And he said, you know what, thank you. I, I really appreciate you telling me that. He's like, can I, have, can I call you anytime I want to? I'm like, yeah, you sure can. I said, and then he told his wife, his wife was in the background, <laughs> listening to this conversation. He said, and his wife said, uh, you're not a racist. And uh, I said, what did she say? <laughs> <laughs> he said, that was my wife, and she said, I'm not a racist. I said, tell the devil to get behind you. <laughs> I said, you have already acknowledged the truth about yourself. And I said, that's where your freedom is. When you can admit you're wrong, God will come in and save you. I said, tell you, don't ever let your wife or anybody else make you doubt that you're wrong. Because if you can't admit you're wrong, um, you, uh, you're never going to be free. So I said, tell your wife to go sit down. And he said, honey, he said, go sit down. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but that guy ended up really thanking me for, for allowing him, you know, causing him to see that, allowing him to see it. And that's what the problem is. Because if I was wrong, you would just see me as being wrong, not some little Uncle Tom running through a cotton field talking about, yes, yeah, a master. But it's your own resentment. And so you need to really look at that. All right? That's why you were seeing that image there. Because when a person's wrong, they're just wrong. When they're right, they're right. And you're not affected by it either way. That makes sense? So just think about it. And uh, look at your heart. Do you have re anger in your heart? Are you? Yeah. I'm sorry? Yes. Yeah. That's the problem. Because if you have any little bit of iota of anger, your, your father is the devil. And you can't see truth. Isn't that right, Jamal? I can't hear you. Totally right. Yeah, absolutely right. It's too bad. 
and, and I'm going to get into this right in a few minutes here. It's too bad that Satan has played such a trick on most people. And, and most people are controlled by the devil and they don't know it. It is really too bad. It's like Christ came and set you free, but you don't know that you are free. You act like slaves. And it's just too bad. Uh, it's just absolutely too sad. It's too sad. Absolutely, it's too sad. And, that, and, that's, and so many people are, are, are controlled by the devil because our battle is a spiritual battle between good and evil. Nothing else exists but that. And people are controlled by evil and don't know that they're controlled by evil. All of your insecurities, all of your doubts, all of your worries, all of your, your everything is of the devil. And it's so unnecessary. It's an illusion. It's not even real. But you act it out as though it is real. That's what's so amazing. And it is brainwashing. Black people are so brainwashed. Most all, not all, but most. I did say not all, right? Yes. <laughs> Only 99.9. <laughs> I wish I could just line them up and slap them. You know what I mean? Just slap them back into reality. I was watching this program this morning. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say to her point that sometimes I think you say things to make people think through All an the issue. time. Yes, right. ma'am. So don't just take it on face value. He wants you to think behind what he's saying. Yeah. And don't take it personally. You can get them to start thinking because one thing that caused me to overcome is I started thinking about my life. And I'm thinking, if white people are holding us back, black folks back, why is it that the people who are telling me this are doing so well? You know, they're living in, in, white, people, in white people communities. They're going to private schools. They have fathers and mothers, but they're telling us we need a program because that old white man won't let us have it. I started thinking about that. It didn't make sense. I come there and hold it, all of us, and so what is the secret that is allowing these black people to get away from these white folks? They won't even tell us the secret. What caused them to get past? Isn't that like a good question? That's a good question. Yes, it's very good. But that question is not thought about. So how did you get past this old bad white man? <laughs> tell us that secret, you know? But they won't even tell us the secret. And black people don't ask, well, what is your secret? How did you get past? You're blacker than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but they won't tell you the secret. Black people just, yes, sir, master, whatever you say. We need a governmental program. Uh, Where's the money? Anyway, I see so many hands. Um, yes, sir. Me? Yes, sir. Okay. I know what she's talking about now because I raised my hand first to this white woman. <laughs> she looked better. <laughs> no, but she looked better. She's not as dark. <laughs> she has better hair. No, it's 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 kind of uh, funny uh, that she says that because my parents, when I grew up, uh, they didn't teach me to see pe people different. I had friends who were white, Mexican, black, or whatever. I treated them all the same. And I saw my parents, especially my mom, treat everybody the same. But, uh, and I know her mom would have been the same way because our moms were good friends. Uh, uh, her, her mom and my mom were, were good friends. But uh, I, I remember being younger, though, and when I saw entertainers, black entertainers, tap dancing and smiling in front of the audience of white people, they could have been making a million dollars a year. It just, I just couldn't stand it. You know, really? Yeah, I just really couldn't stand it. It used to bug me. Wow. It hurt me to see it. And I, and, and I wasn't raised that way. Uh, to, but it just used to see it on TV, see them up there like, how am I doing? Yeah, you know, smiling and dancing and tapping. <laughs> it just used to hurt me to see it. And, and they could make a million dollars a year, but, uh, you know, doing that. But uh, it just used to... When I saw him doing that, I was laughing. It's, it, I thought it was entertainment. Today I was laughing. I when I, it, when up. I, I saw the other day, I saw... Remember Mom Ma Mabley? Remember her? Jeff, or whatever the guy's name is. He, he was, he was, I saw an old clip. He was carrying, a, carrying his pair of shoes. And somebody said, 
hey, veteran, how can you don't have your shoes on? He said, I'm saving these just in case my feet wears out. <laughs> and I, and I, and I just, I just looked and laughed, you know. Yeah, but back funny. then, I would have been so embarrassed about it. No, I was cracking up from childhood until now. <laughs> that used to be some funny stuff. <laughs> Absolutely funny stuff. Wow. D. Lord, you had your hair? Yes, I wanted to say something with regard to what Sherry said about brainwashing, you know. Yeah. Uh, they, they call people Uncle they, People call you Uncle Tom. So I read, when I read the book, Uncle Tom's Cabin, I found that um, Uncle Tom was a forgiving man by the cruelty he had yeah. faced from Simon Legree. Yeah. And I thought, that doesn't even apply. Yeah. Because he forgave him. He was free. No, black people That's messed up. That's what we want to be, free. <laughs> black people are messed up, son. I'm sorry. They are messed up. 99.9%. 99.99. They messed up, buddy. And I'm going to tell you something in a minute that's going to make you want to cry in a minute. Will you help last Sunday at the meeting? Yes. In what way? I expunged a lot of anger I had towards um, the people at work, and then I've been listening to your meditation yeah. CD twice a day, yeah. and just opened up a new realm of thinking and freedom and happiness. My husband's so happy. Right on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not like depressed and you know. You crying. look better today too. You seem oh, freer. You. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Right on. Well, that's what life is all about, overcoming that. Yes. It has nothing to do with color or right. male or female. Right. right, exactly. You are, you will stay with the prayer. I will. Because after a while, you're going to feel really good and free, <laughs> and the old serpent going to come by and tell you you don't need it. Right. No, stay with it. I will. I'll stay with Absolutely it. Absolutely stay with it. I've been doing it 21 years. Wow. Day in and day out. I've never stopped. It's awesome. And I'm free. I have perfect peace, but I still do it because I know who gave me the peace. Right. And right. so I want my, I want that connection to stay with him. Right. We're well, right on to you. I loved it. Thank you so much. You changed totally, my life. Totally changed my life. Right on. See, that's the kind of stuff we're supposed to be living with. It's about life. We are a living being. It's about living. It's not about color. It's not about welfare. It's not about, it's about living. Christ came so that we could love one another. And it's about love, and most people don't have love for one another because they don't know what it is. They just don't have it. And that's what we need to get in touch with, love. Well, good. I was in, a, I just got, as I said earlier, I just came back from a Wichita Fall, Texas. Thank you. And uh, I spoke at a tea party rally there, and I got to, one episode, we did a TV show about the Tea Party rally, and the people asking me, why am I participating in this? And I explained to them why. And then the next morning, I got up and we did a radio interview, and from there, uh, I spoke to a juvenile detention center. It wasn't part of the plan, but they asked me, would I do it since I'm in town? And I said yes. And they had both boys and girls there, and it was a mixture of all races. And they had girls there as young as 11 and 12 years old in juvenile detention center wearing these orange robes yeah. and they live in cells. Can you imagine that? No. Little girls, and these were white girls. These were not black girls, these were white girls. Living in a cell at 11 and 12 years old. They wear orange prison or jumpsuits. But uh, so they asked me to talk, so we go in there, and the teachers all gathered in the room as well. about 11 or 12 of these kids sitting in the room. Um, and uh, so we go in, and the kid was all uptight, you know. You know, you can just feel the tightness of them not wanting to participate and just angry. And, and the guy that took me there told me they have had everybody there trying to help these kids, and they can't seem to get through to them. And so he heard that I work with them. So we go in there and these kids sitting there and just, I mean, just angry and uninterested and just tight. And so I introduced myself and told them what I did. And I asked them about anger. And I said, how many of you are angry? And all of them raised their hands. All of them raised their hand that they're angry. And so I said, well, what are you angry about? 
And all of them said that they were angry because their fathers were not around and their mothers were either on drugs or impatient or was not treating them well. And they had nobody to talk to about it and they're just angry. And I explained to them, I totally understand it. You're right in what you feel. You're right in why you feel that way. But I explained to them that you got to overcome this. You got to drop this anger. And I explained to them what I went through as a kid and how I grew up with that anger, what it did for my life. And I told them that it's a spiritual thing and that you're never going to feel better in life until you can drop that anger. And that you're going to end up just like your mothers and just like your father. You're not going to be able to help yourself. And there was just one black girl, you know, just really, really angry. She didn't even want to participate at first. But after a while, she started to open up. And, I mean, she would go had gone through some stuff that I, I don't know if I could have endured as a kid. And a lot of these kids, their mothers and fathers are drug addicts and their parents, grandparents are no good. And they were just growing up angry without any love. But the world don't know how to set them free. They just don't know how to help them. They think, well, if we gave them more education, that would do it. It doesn't work. Look how screwed up, can I say screwed up in the church? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Look how screwed up the parents are. They are educated. Everybody and their mama has, has a degree. They have PhDs, MSDs, LODs, YEDs, and they're still screwed up. It doesn't work. Education, education is a worldly thing that helps you survive in a material way. You notice that, right? It doesn't bring wisdom. It doesn't set you free. It doesn't make your marriage work. It doesn't cause your children to grow up noble children. It just educates you so you can go out and earn a living. That's all it does. And I got these kids to start opening it up. Those kids start opening it up, and I have to tell you, it was, it was amazing. There was one tough guy there, a white guy, 17, and uh, this guy just started boohooing. I mean, just crying when he was talking about his situation. And it was amazing. It was, I, it was like I saw the hand of God just sweep that room and change the hearts of my. Those kids, I mean, they were like a light turned on in all of them. And the, and the people, the workers were amazed. They were like, we've never seen anything like this before. Those kids was opening it up. They were crying. They were talking about their situation. And you could see their load being lifted away from them. Because truth went in there. You know, God went in there and told them what the real deal is. The real deal is not your color. The real deal is that you're of your father, the devil, if you have anger. And don't let anybody, anybody tell you that you can have anger and you're a child of God. They are a liar. They are absolutely a liar. You can't control anger. You can't, you have to get overcome it completely because it's a spirit. It has nothing, it's a spirit that's made a home inside of you. Our battle is a spiritual battle between good and evil. We deal with spirits. Right. We really do. And, and evil lives in people and good lives in people. And the battle is always about that. But those kids lit up, boy. It was like, the black girl said to me, because I asked all of them in the end, what did you learn? She said, uh, I realized that and listen to you, I didn't know how to forgive. I didn't know I needed to forgive, but I didn't know how. Because I, I showed them how. Most people don't know how to forgive. Saying I'm sorry is not enough. It doesn't work. I've never heard a person go to someone and say, oh, I'm sorry for offending you, and it worked. It doesn't work. So I showed them how to forgive. She said, I learned how to forgive. I learned how not to become my mother because I had always said that I don't want to be, and this girl like you about 12, 13, 14. I, I, I don't want to be like my mother, but I realize I become just like her. After hearing what you said, I'm just like my mom. And I said I never will have a girl or baby because I didn't want my daughter to become like my mother. And I realize now that I'm already like my mother. And then she's, and I said, well, you do it to the boys too because mama turned boys into girls. And uh, so I said that you would do it to your boy. And then she also realized... I forgot the third thing she realized. But we got that kind of feedback from all those little kids uh, in that room. And I told the girls that um, do not have sex with a boy until you get married. Amen. 
When you tell you, I said, when they tell you they love you, they don't love you because sex is not love. And I said that uh, to the guys, I said that anytime you are angry and you're acting out and carrying on, you are a girl. You're a woman. And those guys were like shocked. Because they, <laughs> they didn't want to consider themselves as a woman. Because a man is always patient. He's always honest. He's always like a brick wall of truth so that his wife and children are protected by that. Men don't act out. They don't. If a man is acting out, he is a woman. <laughs> He's a female. And that's the truth. But I saw, and I've seen this over the last 20 years. It wasn't like it was new, but there was something special about what happened to those kids. And even the blacks that were in that room, because there was one black teacher who raised his hand, and he said, well, the kids are at fault too because they go out and they get into this, this trouble. They don't want to do what they do. I said, no, they're not. They're not at fault for that because if they had good parents that had guided them in the right way, they wouldn't get into that kind of trouble because they have been guided. But if the parents are messed up and not a good example and guided them, what do you expect the kid? The kid is like an empty shell being filled with information. They don't know, they can't have, even parents can't have an challenge of the world, not, the world nowadays. They give in to the devil. So how do you expect kids not to give in to the devil? For an example, in the, pub, in the public school today, they allow, parents are allowing the education system to teach their children that homosexuality is normal. Parents are allowing that to happen. They're telling them that it's absolutely normal. They have gay day. Month, the whole month. That's right. And, and the parents are allowing that. So how are the kids going to fight against that if the parents are for it? You know what I mean? The adults are for it. So I said to the guy, no, you're wrong, sir. That's not it. This is a spiritual battle. These kids can't fight evil. God said that we should raise them up. And when they go out into the world, they can handle it. But they're not being raised up. They don't know how to deal with this stuff. What is wrong with people? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh, well, I do understand. It's evil. It's absolute evil. And they don't realize how evil has taken over their lives. Because people don't... I have... Okay, so we went there. And I, I, I'm running kind of fast. I want to tell you... I'll tell you a long story in a short way. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the people in that room, the adults, they were taken back by that. They were like... There were professionals in there who... Uh, they counsel folks, and they really renowned counselor. And they said they have never been able to get that kind of reaction from anybody, and especially in that quick period of time. But the truth changed you just like that. It doesn't take but a blinking of an eye to change. Do you know that? Yes. yes. It doesn't take but a blinking of an eye to change a new nature, and then start on your way. And then... Um, I had the opportunity to speak to some of the people at the Tea Party rally at a dinner that night. Uh, the one thing I noticed about most Christians, both black and white, they say that they believe in God, but they still have anger. Because I asked the question, how many of you believe in God? Everybody raised their hands. Yes, yeah, I, I love the Lord. <laughs> Quote scriptures until the cows come home. And I said, well, how many of you have anger? Everybody raise their hands. <laughs> so <laughs> how can you have anger and believe in God? Then they don't know. Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So what I come to realize is that they know about God, but they don't believe in God, really, because God is perfect love. God is love. There is no anger. Now you mix and you better be glad. You better, let me get to you in a minute. You better be glad God don't have any anger because we'll all be dead. <laughs> we'll be dead. We'll be wiped out. So you can't... Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I've read in the Bible different places where God spoke of anger, but are you mixing anger and hatred the same? It's the same thing. Because I've, I've read in the Bible where God expressed anger. Right. Do you have anger? Uh, I, I get angry sometimes, yeah. I don't, have, I don't live with it, no. But you do have it. Uh, yeah, I can. I well, you say you don't live with it. If it's in you, how you don't live with it? I'm saying I don't live with it. I mean, it, there's some situations. Can I get some water, Lord? Shit. If somebody came up and slapped my son, 
they're gonna make me angry. I'm gonna do something about it. Do you ever get angry at your wife? Uh, yes, I do. So they don't necessarily have to slap your son. Your wife needs to open their mouth. Same thing. She's, it, 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 that, some, sometimes that's even worse. Uh, I, it's sometimes it's worse. I'd rather her sometimes slap my son than do some of the things that she uh, subconsciously. But the point did. is, you have anger, right? The uh, yes. And you and you believe in God. Yes. Okay. Uh, it's but, a, that's but, an I, issue. That's the thing. And I, I love your question about God talked about anger. But I, I'm trying, I, I'm I want to respond to, say to is, that. Uh, is I, I see hatred as different than hatred is something that just stays with you. Hatred is something that uh, embodies you. What's but the difference anger, between anger and hatred? Anger is an emotion. You, can, you know, it, it, it passes. It, it uh, you. I mean, you you get anger, and then and then. The next minute it could be gone, but hatred is still there. No. Well, one thing, anger doesn't pass, and hatred doesn't pass because they're all in one. It may subside for a moment <laughs> until the next issue comes along, and then you're angry again because it is your nature. So it doesn't pass. It's with you. And that's why God said we have to overcome that. We need a new nature, a nature of love, so that the outer environment can't bring that out of us because it's not inside of us. I think he was yeah, referencing it, like righteous anger. What? He was refer referencing righteous anger right. that God displayed in the Bible. I think that's what he was talking about. Let me get a holy person to respond to that. How do you respond to that? About this anger he's talking about that God talked about. It's all anger. It's all hate. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Let me tell you about the anger that God talks about. I see injustice. But I feel nothing about it. It doesn't move me. It doesn't enter into the kingdom that I live in within. Uh, and that's why I'm out there fighting this battle. You know, I'm out there on the line fighting it because I see it. But what God did was, before he sent me out there, he gave me a new nature. He took away my anger and gave me perfect peace so that I can see that the battle is a spiritual battle between good and evil. And that when someone attack you, they say something wrong, they do something wrong, you can clearly see that it's not that person, but this thing that's made a home inside of them. And then you won't take it personally, and you are not affected by it at all. Because an angry person would be taken down after a while. It doesn't matter, you're an emotional person too, and you're dealing with another emotional person, eventually they're gonna get to you. How are you gonna win a battle if you could be taken down? And so that, that anger, that, hold on, just hold on. that anger is of the nature of the devil, and real power is in perfect love without any anger at all, without the devil nature in you. And so the anger that God had, or Christ had, he was able to see injustice. He dealt with it with a powerful way without being moved from within. And then when you have that love operating, things start to change. But, is it, but if you have anger, you don't change anything. What I'm saying, but if they got have anger, not not emotional anger, anger. But, but okay, but I'm trying. He to just say, saw. No, he didn't have anger in the way that you think of anger. I mean, how you know the way I'm thinking of anger? I mean, we just talking about the word. So, well, for example, like in when he went in the temple and he saw the um, money changers and he right threw the but table. But he didn't feel that. anything about it. So he threw the tables, so that to us would mean anger. If I had anger that he's talking about. And much of folk call me nigga, nigga, nigga. <laughs> well, so, I mean, Uncle that can just Tom, I mean, sell out. I walk into the room and somebody is. <laughs> Uncle Tom and sell out. And the way they try to, people say some of the worst things to me <laughs> that you can possibly say. They say things that you wouldn't even say to an animal, to me, right? Bless but I, I see them and I know they can't help it. It's like, it's like I'm looking at a person overreacting to truth and I've been there, and I understand it, so I don't feel anything about it. It's like there's an a invisible bubble around you where it cannot get to you. And that's what corrects people, that kind of love. But if you feel anything about it, you're going to hurt. You're not going to help. Yes, ma'am? Is it that you're not judging them when they're saying those things to you? And make the difference. You're not, you're not, yeah, you're, you're judging them about righteous judgment. You're not hating them. Okay. You see that they can't help themselves. And, and that's the way a marriage should be. 
If men were in order and they love God more than they love anything, they have this new nature, when their wives are waking up mad about nothing and carrying on, it would be a person standing there carrying on and, and he has perfect love for her and he'll correct it. Sometimes without even saying anything. I'm telling you. But if he is emotional at all, she's going to bring it out of him. She's going to mess it up. Yes, sir. If I walk into a room and see someone raping my niece, how am I supposed to react to that? With power and authority, but not with anger. This is a serious thing. You guys making jokes out of it? No. That though it's not serious. Yeah. Your families are suffering. Your communities are suffering. Because the one thing that the devil has done is to see most people. And you don't know that everything that we do is a spiritual battle. You don't really know that. And the only way that you're going to find out is that you have to allow yourself to really see yourself and know yourself so God can come in and change your nature and allow you to see that this battle is a spiritual battle. It's not, it, it, I'm telling you, it is a spiritual battle. In the, in, the, in the good old days when boys were boys and men were men, they, they talked about a battle between good and evil. They knew it was evil going up against good. And so they fought that way, they act that way, they live that way. That's not known anymore. Good is always talked about, but evil is not being talked about in a manner that it needs to be talked about. And so if God, just think about this notion. If God can't do any better than send his son in order to get rid of sin, but yet we still sin and say, oh, it's okay. Why, what was the purpose of sending his son? He sent his son so we can overcome the devil, so we can overcome evil. So we can be a free people. So we can fight evil with good. That's why he sent his son. I don't even know why you would want to accept that you're a child of God and still feel the same way, act the same way. You still have the same nature. Why would anyone want to accept that? I would say either I'm missing something here or something is up. You got the same nature that you had prior to coming to God. What was the purpose of coming to God? If you were angry before God coming to him, realizing him, and you're angry after realizing him, what's the purpose? Yes, ma'am. I, I used to think you had to get, if you, if you saw something wrong, um, you got, it was automatic. You got angry because it's wrong. It is but automatic. You can see wrong, and, and you do not have to be angry about it. Like yes. that situation the gentleman in front of me gave, you see that happening to your daughter or whoever it was that's being molested, and, and you see it's wrong, you know it's wrong. You do not have to get angry to act. You can, that's you, right. you can just simply act. You, you still you do act. what has to be done, but you leave the anger out of it. And that way it's taken care of and you haven't, you haven't endangered your own soul, your as own a, self. Uh, as a matter of you've fact. Done, you've done the right thing in the right way. As a matter of fact, in that state of mind, your action would be such that you never have to go back and and clean it up. Right. You, you would do the right thing in that moment as your daughter is being raped. But if you're angry, you're going to do the wrong thing that's going to get you and everybody else in trouble. I'm telling you, because you have no insight as to what you're doing. You, have no, you can't see what you're doing because angry people are guided by darkness. <clears throat> they don't see the enemy until the enemy overtakes them. I'm telling you, God wants us to be guided by the light. Uh, I asked uh, some of the white folks at this meeting I went to. No, they asked me, well, how do we help black people? What do we say to black people? We would like to reach out to them, but they hate us. And it's now that Obama's in there, they really hate us. <laughs> <laughs> what do we say to black people? I say, are you a Christian? Yes. But what do I say to black people? I say, you speak the truth. Tell them the truth. The same truth that applies to you and your family, your friends, applies to black people. It, it, you don't tell them something else, but to speak the truth to your family or to your friends. You tell the truth to black people. Why don't Christians know that? Black people are something not some, I know they act like it, but they're people too. They're just angry people that have, who have not been dealt with for the most part. But it's the truth that makes us free. So white people should want black people free, so tell them the truth. 
And when they get mad, run. <laughs> it doesn't take off. <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's a phone call from Al Noble. And he said, Jesus took action for love for his father, not anger. That's right. Absolutely, Al. That's right. It's about love. It's totally about love. And angry people, even if you have a little bit of eye odor, a little a tiny little piece of anger, that much, you don't have love. You don't have love. Because anger is of the father and the devil, and God and the devil does not, do not get along. They're not going to dwell in the same place. That's why he said you need a new nature. This is why uh, Christ said that this narrow path, most people are going to fail it. The straight and narrow path, most people are going to fail it. Because they just, they, they, they want to accept who they really are. They don't accept that they're not of their father. They, they excuse their, their actions. They justify anger. They justify the nature. Because instead of just realizing, you know what? I am not free. I'm of my father the devil. If you can understand that, I'm telling you, you can go free. And this is why we are losing this battle because, you, because so many people don't see the spiritual battle. It's spiritual, folks. It really is. And the only way I know it is because he allowed me to see it. He allowed me to see that it's spiritual. It really is. It had nothing to do with we just live in this body. It has nothing to do with that at all. We are a living being. We are a living spiritual being. And we got devil spirits, God spirits out there trying to help us. And I'm glad to know that because, you know, I read in the Bible the other night, one of the, the disciples said that he, know, he was speaking to the church. I think it was Paul. He said, one thing I noticed about you people here at this church as long as I agree with you, you love me. But the moment I have to disagree or correct you, you become my bitter enemy. Isn't that amazing? Yes. But you know what? I can care less. <laughs> really. And that's the beauty of it. Now, I love my friends. I love my family. My love was right because I'm free, and I didn't get that from a man or a woman. And I am unwilling to sacrifice that for anybody because nobody would give it to me or could give it to me. I want you to be free. And so, as he said, you know, you're not going to be light for this. But it's okay. And we all can have it. That's what's so amazing. It's right at hand. Do you know that the easiest thing in the world to get is a new nature? It is the easiest thing to get. There's nothing else easier than that. What's the evidence of that? That is so easy? Yeah. No one we know has it. Oh, why you don't have it? No, what's the evidence that it's so easy? No one we know has it. I have it. <laughs> one person. Right? No, more than one. It's just you don't well, know. Well, I mean, other people I know, one person, two, yeah. three people. <laughs> but it is the easy thing. The Bible said, twinkling of an eye, you can have it. You know how fast your eye move, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when you're scared. <laughs> you're scared. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. This is from Della. I also read Uncle Tom's Cabin and could never understand why anyone would consider being called an Uncle Tom an insult. He was a devoted husband and father, a devout Christian, and even though he was sold away from his family, and he never lost his faith or his integrity. Even on his deathbed, he was filled with love and had no anger for the circumstances of his life. So whenever I hear someone use the term Uncle Tom, I know they are lying and have never read the book. Amen. <laughs> but you think about this, folks, and then I'll take some hands. When you are trying to tell someone the truth, the truth is intent to help you to get better, right? And you are trying to tell them the truth, and they get mad at you for telling them the truth, you got to know that that's evil. Because why wouldn't the average person appreciate you telling them the truth? They're like, oh, yeah, thank you. That's cool. That's love. Thank you for telling me the truth. But the average person get angry at you for telling them the truth. Don't you know that's evil? Why would anybody reject truth that made you free? And then how is it that you could, you don't know much about God if you think that, and God said he loves us, right? 
God said, oh, I love you. Um, God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that we may go free. What a great love that is, right? So he sent his son because he loved you, and yet you don't feel like you have love. You're not free, so you don't have love. Wouldn't you want to question God about that? No? <laughs> if I sent my son for you guys to go free, and he die, he take on all of your sins so you don't have to worry about them anymore, and all you do is accept him and be free, I'll be, and then he come back up there with me, and we, you know, every morning, Sunday morning, we get up and go to, I send him over to Coffee Bean, I order and get some cafe mocha. I get a large one. He get an extra large because he's fatter. <laughs> and, and we sit there and look, turn the TV on, looking down at you guys carrying on. He'd be like, well, Dad, why did I? What's wrong with these folks? I gave my life so they don't have to do this. What's going wrong with this? And they won't even question why, if God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that I could go free, why am I not free? Anger is not freedom. When someone can tear you down and build you up and make you happy and make you sad and frustrate you, that's not freedom. Should that be like a question mark there? I can't hear you. Definitely. But people don't question that. They justify the anger. Oh, well. Yes, did you have your hand? Yes, sir. Uh, going back to when you went to the detention center, mm -hmm. And you went in there and talked to those kids. And, uh, but there's one more thing that, that occurred there. Love. These people can tell the truth too, but they don't have love. And the kids were able to see that. Yes, sir. You see? Very good point. See, so... Uh, Your so kids know when you don't have truth, love. Truth in love works. Yeah. Truth. That's a very Anybody good point. It's like having a, two pairs together. And they're trying to tell their kids the right thing, but they're doing it without love. Those kids know that. And that's why they, when they become a certain age, they start acting out, they don't listen, because they have not been guided by love. And so that love has not justified them and then build them in love. And then you wonder, what happened to my kids? You know, how come I, I did everything I can do? I went to work and, and I did this, and yet they messed up. Because they were guided by the spirit of anger, which is of their father, the devil. And that's the truth. Uh, one other thing I want to tell you real quick about that I realize, do you know that in the black community that every month 40,000 black babies are aborted? Every month. Isn't that like a, my mind can't grasp that. 40,000 black babies are aborted every month. Is that good or evil? evil. And most of you people are Christian women that are having these abortions. They're not coming from the centers. These people go to church. They read the Bible. They lift up holy hands. They give tithe and offering. 40,000 black babies are aborted every month in the black community. How many total? Over um, Every year, a half a million. Oh my God. I mean, I'm sorry. How many total a babies. month? And then a month, amongst everybody, white, black, Oh, Indian, amongst, everything. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. But that alone is shocking. All in the name, and you guys don't know that evil exists? <laughs> and you're walking around talking about God? That doesn't even make sense. And I bet you a lot of them take their Bible to the abortion clinic. <laughs> I remember one day I was running at the park, and I saw this black guy running to, and he would read the Bible while I was running. I'm like, wow, his mother done messed him up. <laughs> <laughs> you see the drug addicts reading the Bible? They all know the Lord. I'm telling you, it's a spiritual battle. I'm watching this program called Black Agenda this morning on BET, put on by Al Sharpton, on TV One, they had all these people there, and it was done at a church. And uh, at a church, listen to my words, at a church in Harlem, New York, packed with folks, mostly blacks, and they, they cried out, where's my check? Where's the, where's the money? 
and the, and the so-called black leadership included some on their preachers saying, well, they need to get the money to the mayors of the city and not the governors so that we can get the money. We need educational programs. We need governmental programs. I'm thinking, why, how did black people lose the idea that we need to train our children up in the right way to go? That you teach your children to work. We didn't grow up looking for a, a governmental program to learn how to work. And then this is a cycle because I remember during the time that they had that Watts riot and they brought in all the money in order to build up South Central. That money didn't go to South Central. It went to those leaders and to those preachers. And so it's all about the money, but the people of God, who are really of the devil, don't see that because they've been so brainwashed and dumbed down. They don't see that they're being used. They don't see that they're being taken advantage of. And all these people are saying the same thing. Yeah, Obama promised us. We voted for Obama. And then Al Sharpton is saying, well, you know, you need to vote for black mayors and black other black politicians, so we're going to organize and get you to vote so we can vote in black people. They're like, yeah, right on. And they want to know what is the black agenda. My answer is get over being black. <laughs> That's the first black agenda. Get over being black. Because when you're up truly of God, you're not of color. Color doesn't matter. I'm telling you. And I know this because I used to be into the black thing. I woke up black. I laid down black. I thought about being black. <laughs> I had the whole afro. I went through the black scene. But I don't think about being black anymore. Now, I know some I'm going to say because I'm an Uncle Tom. A house, whatever, right? But it's because the color, it's the spirit. It's the character. It's the love. It's not the color. God can care less about what color you are. It's your spirit. You are a living being. And you must be born again. You need a brand new nature. I even asked the people at the, uh, the big gathering, the adults, the Christian adults, do you know how to forgive? They said no. But prior to that question, they thought they knew how to forgive. And the way that you forgive, who don't know how to forgive? Okay. The way you forgive, you got to first get to know yourself. You cannot forgive until you know yourself. And when you get to know yourself and you realize that this spirit has made a home in you and it causes you to do the things you don't want to do, the average person don't want to be angry. You don't want to be insecure. You don't want to have fear and doubt. You don't want to have to look for love from someone else. You know, you don't want to worry. You don't want to yell at your kids. But when you, so when you get to know yourself and realize that, hey, this thing is driving me, so it must be driving my mother or my father or, or, or my friend. And so I wouldn't want anyone to hate me for doing things that I can't help but do. Why would I hate my fellow man? You know, I wouldn't want that. And when you can get to see that and, and really start seeing that you're no darn good, God, even just seeing that would cause him to change your nature. And that's what forgiveness is because he allows you to see why you feel this way. You hate your parents. You hate your violator. It will cause you to forgive them. And when you forgive them, then you can enter into the kingdom of heaven. And once you enter in, you locked in, and it's done. Because now you walk by the light and not by the darkness of anger. And you see things coming and it cannot overtake you. You see it before it overtakes you, and you let it pass. You, you become the observer of life then instead of trying to create life. Isn't that cool? Yes. Yes. And it's something that happens on its own. You can't make yourself forgive. You just need to see that you're an angry, unforgiving person. You need to really see it without any excuse and just watch it, and he would do the rest. He wants you to come out of denial. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. We really cannot do nothing. And then you become a brother and a sister of Christ and all things are added unto you because everything that he owns, we now own it. Everything, this earth was made for us, his children. And so then you don't have to hustle and bustle and lie and steal and cheat and worry and mess up your family trying to get something. Chase the rainbows. But you got to let it happen simply by knowing yourself.
Oh, oh. <laughs> Stephanie, what are you thinking? All kinds of stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> All kinds of stuff. Like what, real fast? One thing I was thinking, like when I had my business, I know black people, I mean, white people don't keep you down because I had a business and I had I had low prices and stuff and like and I had like a hand, I had 400 customers and a handful of black customers. Yeah. And like when I first started, they say, oh. You have, you're black and you have a business, that's good. And they want a lower price. I said, no, I have my prices low for everybody, but they want it cheaper. Uh -huh. They don't show up. And the ones that do, they see I'm black and they don't come back. Even though the kids, the one kid said they uh, like my work. And I'm sorry to cut you okay. off. I only have 10 oh, seconds. Okay. Go to my website, Bond Action, get a copy of my prayer, and be still and know, and you'll be fine. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you guys. For more information or to purchase a copy of this show, visit us on the web at www.bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-BOND.